from Blarney in County Cork all the way to the other end of the country. It is Andrea Cor, well, nearly anyway, Dundalk County Louth is what I'm talking about here. And in my hand, I have something here which says, what does it say? It says, Andrea Cor Christmas Songs. Now, Andrea, there's a big history with this here. So I'm going to sit back and tell me, this has been going for over a year. Why does it take 12 months to get this thing out? Well, it doesn't. That was an idea, an idea germinating. Well, really, it, it was inspired by... Uh, I mean, the idea to do it and to record uh, cr cr some Christmas songs was... I, I made a visit to the, um, to the hospice in Harl's Cross in Dublin, and it was the uh, Light of a Life Christmas concert, and I was turning on the lights and singing, sang a few Christmas songs with a male choir. And it was just a very special, moving experience, you know. I mean, I think that, that you know, the, uh, like singing out to the people with the, you know, the candles raised and uh, remembering loved ones gone. And it just felt very special. And um, so, yeah, from that decided, just thought, God, should record those songs and with the, with the male choir. So, and then obviously that fundraiser can't go ahead this year, which was one of their yeah. main... Um, sources of, of money. Well, one of the four is Oh Holy Night. Um, do you regret the fact that you had a chance to play that on an altar in your local church <laughs> with your father before he died? And this is one thing now almost for him, if you like, because you didn't do it then, because you were too chicken. Because I was a chicken, yeah. I, um, yeah, you know what? There's something very special to me about it and, and very emotional to me about, uh, you know, the idea of him being somehow aware of it now. So, yes, in, in John Dock, I used to sing it with Daddy every Christmas. Uh, we were kind of like the Von Trapps at Christmas and the relations would come around and we'd sing yeah. different songs. But I would always sing A Holy Night with Daddy playing. And he used to play the organ at, at Mass uh, every Sunday and obviously Christmas Mass. So he said, would you come and um, sing it? with me, Pandy, and I said, um, OK, I will. And we practised and rehearsed, and then Christmas Day... Big Day came. Big Day came. I was crying scared, like, yeah, right. properly crying scared. Yeah. I could not do it. OK, well, since then, you've done it for the Pope in the Vatican. <laughs> I know. And you've done it for Bill Clinton. <laughs> the dog's a tough crowd. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I walked into that. OK, so, basically, you're happy to sing it now, obviously. Yeah? I'm happy to sing it now. I mean, I, I, I you know, I, he used to joke with me and say, you know, oh, you never sang it with me, Pandy. And, you know, I, I, kind of, I regretted that I didn't do it with him. I regretted it at the time that I didn't do it with him. But um, anyway, so right. that's the okay, memory. The song you're going to give us later, uh, later on is one of the four here, and it's Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, which has been sung by so many people down through the years. Yes. If I just point to one person, why is that one person special? Judy Garland. Well, it's the, I, I think it's the original, and it's, the, it's the, how the, the lyrics were originally written. It was, yeah. it was in, in wartime. It's not the cosy version we hear all the it's time. It's not the touchy or the kind of, yeah. yeah, the kind of where we all feel yeah. kind of all comforted. It is, it is, it'll be better next year, you know. And, and if I decided to do this, and then and COVID happened, and it became so relevant and poignant, you know. Until then, we'll have to muddle through somehow. Um, so, because it has been quite like, you know, that, yeah. that situation, so... And what you've done here is three classics and one that you've written yourself, you put in there as well, isn't that it? Yeah. And um, is that, like, is it a Christmas field thing and therefore it's one of the Christmas songs? Well, it's a song I wrote years ago. Yeah. It's called Begin Again and um, it's about loss. Um, and it's about surrendering to it that, um, you know, that we don't know, that it's a mystery. Yeah. And, um, and to begin again after after loss, and then with with this <laughs> with this year particularly, it came into my head again, and um, uh, you know I feel that there is a lot of loss to come to terms with this year at Christmas. There will be empty chairs, and and um, and it is. I do think we have to look to the future and begin again, and that's what we go. We have to. Yeah. <laughs> what are the choice? So. Um, it felt relevant, and then that, that "God rest you, merry gentlemen" started going through my head at the same time, and it became what it is. It became that song because about this time last year, or a little bit before that, maybe about 15 months ago, <clears throat> you brought out "Barefoot Pilgrimage." Yeah. Now, 
This was not, I kept calling it an autobiography. It's not an autobiography, it's a memoir as such. Mem and it's written in a way that I've never seen anything like that written before. And yet you get to know more about who you are than if it had been an autobiography. So in other words, congratulations, it's very well written. Thank but that's you. not really the point. One of the things is, is that uh, your father's poetry is in there. Yeah. Do you think he would have got a real buzz out of the fact, I won an on post book award? You know what, I really think he would have. And I think that's why winning that award, I felt I was sharing it with him and I felt that he was winning one. Uh, posthumously, is that yeah. the word? And you know, and that's why it was so emotional. In the first place, getting the book published, which yeah. meant his poems are published, um, then to win an award was just extra special. But when you sat down to write this, were you feeling that you were writing this for yourself all the time? And it never occurred to you till the very end that, wait a minute, other people are going to read this. Now, I know that sounds kind of corny, but that's possible. Is that your case? It is. I kind of had to think like that. But first of all, I started to write. It was a kind of exorcism in a way. Yeah. Um, but also not really. Exorcism sounds obviously so so um, dark. But it was um, it was coming to terms literally with grief. Yeah. And and you know the perspective that I had on our our lives and our family um, and the, was was from this distance seemed remarkable to me. And then, obviously, with parents die dying, you get aware of your own mortality. And I thought, oh, God, I have to write it down before I die, or, or it'll die too. So it really was written with the idea of, of that, that this is written down, so, so, it's, re so it's real. And um, then, obviously, when it started to become more, more of a book, and I thought, OK, I, um, I just had to forget about any idea of a reader, because I think, uh, to me, it's... A few me, my friends, a few friends and I, we call it singeritis, where you want to be liked. So you can't write a book for you, thinking like that. So I had to just disregard a reader. But when you did that, when you wrote the book, a lot of the things are out there, people are related to in a certain way. With the miscarriages that was mentioned in the thing, have many people come to you and said, thank you so much, Andre. It's about blinking time. More people talked about certain things they don't talk about. Yeah, well, there definitely was. Um, you know, well, there was definitely... It, it, it's clear that it resonated with a lot yeah, of people. I mean, from, from the book, I, if, I wa if I had to think about what would people talk about it afterwards or what would make the, the headlines in a certain way, I didn't consider that would. Right. Um, but it did. And, and um, yeah, I think that, yeah, a lot of, I think women did feel that I, some people did respond to me in yeah, that way of, yeah. of, I'm glad you... Do you know, the funny thing is, like, you, you, the music that you've had a passion for all your life, you suddenly walked into this ludicrous world fame. 40 million album sales with your two sister and your brother as well. It was just, were you ready for it? Were you able for it? Looking back, do you think, wait a minute, I wish I was a little older, or you mightn't have enjoyed it as much. Did you enjoy it as much? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Um, I'm pretty philosophical. It is what it is, and it was exactly the path it was supposed to be. Too many airports. Sorry, but there was a lot of that, and um, yeah. But it was amazing. I mean, a lot of people work hard and don't achieve that success. But we did yeah. work very, very hard, and and um, we're upside down with jet lag most of the time. But God, I'm absolutely glad we did it, and we did work hard like that, yeah. Yeah, and in recent years also, you've done many other things. You have two solo albums, uh, but also you've, you've become a mother, you're a, a wife, you become a, somebody who acts on stage in London, and in, I mean, like, playing the main, didn't you play the main Jane Eyre? You were Jane Eyre? Yeah. That's um, Dancing at Lunasa? Yeah, Chrissy, yeah. That's pretty good, and here's one you're not going to like. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> Sharon Rabbit, it's 30 years. It's oh, in short. In, 20, <laughs> in 2021. 30 years I since see. the commitments. Ah, that's unbelievable. Yeah. But I was a baby with yeah. huge cheeks. Right. Yeah. And do people say that line to you all the time, do they? They don't. At the time, they did. I'm sure they yeah. did. All right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, well, listen, let's get back finally then to this here, because you're going to give us one of the songs later on in the programme. It is Christmas songs. It's four songs by Andrea Corr. And just with that there, when I said a year ago, um, there's been a bit of a journey around the world for this thing, hasn't yeah. there? Because you were trying to find this kind of all-male choir. Yeah. All-male choir that could be in the one room at the same time. Not easy with coronavirus. But you managed to find something in Adelaide or somewhere in Australia? It's actually Perth. Perth. Yes, I mean, Anna Rice, who produced it and arranged uh, this uh, beautiful and the choirs, it's... Um, she was left to that job and when when we started to uh, began to like organize it it started to like doors started to close more and more like as in the starts to lock down different places like a domino yeah. effect 
So, I mean, she thinks she tried the UK and obviously, and then Canada, and, and then we ended up far, far, far away in Perth. Managed to get With a the Giovanni concert. Consort, yeah. Consort, oh, excuse me. Yes, consort. Okay, very, very good. And it all worked out, didn't it? Like, uh, as in virtually Zooming. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was beautiful. Like, uh, like, literally a few weeks ago, I got up at about six in the morning and the, the sun wasn't even up. And um, on Zoom, we, they were being recorded in Perth. I think it was about two in the afternoon there. And it was just beautiful. It really was. And there was something about it that felt really unifying yeah. because here we all we're so far apart, but we're really all in the same in the same uh, boat. And the question that I'm sure finally that a lot of people ask you, and fair play, do you think you'll come back together as the band, as the family playing on stage? There's yeah. always talk. I mean, you did a few years ago. We did. We've done two albums. Yeah, yeah we came back and did that. So I mean, I hope. And you I can do it again so. this time at your leisure, and not 400 dates in one year. Yeah. <laughs> That would be good. Yeah, not off. like that. I couldn't yeah, do that again. Couldn't, couldn't survive it. Again. All right, well, what you're going to do is um, have yourself a, a very Merry Christmas, and we're going to play that song, or you're going to play it for us live a little bit later on in the programme. Andrea, thanks a million. Fair play to you, and Happy New Year.